welcome back to another video. My name is Heidi, also known as Books and Cables on the various social medias. In this video, I am going to be making a certain cardigan that you may have seen in a recent music video and on the variety of celebrities who received one of these cardigans as part of the promotion for this album release. So it's been in my mind for a while to do one of these sort of recreation from image projects because I have a huge repository of knitwear that I want to make for my own wardrobe. I kind of get these from Pinterest, from when I'm watching TV or movies and I see an excellent sweater. And I've also been known to ask people, like, not like walking down the street or anything, but like colleagues if I see them wearing a particularly choice uh, knit garment. I might ask them for a photo of it for inspiration or recreation in the future. And lately I've been feeling a little bit uninspired in terms of my knitting. I've felt like I didn't really want to pick up any of the things that I was currently working on, but I didn't want to spend money to buy more yarn either. So I thought I would do something a little bit more creative and practice a skill that I wanted to practice for a while, which is writing a knitwear pattern from scratch. So I have been doing modifications on patterns and I have re-figured out parts of already published patterns that I wasn't happy with, but I've never actually done a full project from the beginning to end. So. I had a little bit of limitations because I didn't want to buy any yarn, but luckily because of all of the years that I've been knitting, I do have a small stash of yarn already in my house. And in this case, I had some Nitpicks Wool of the Andes in sport weight in a white color that I thought would work well for this cardigan, as well as uh, you would need a small quantity of black as the contrast trim on the uh, hem. Uh, like the bottom of the sweater and on the neckband and I think on the sleeves as well. So I had all of that in my hands and regardless of any purchases I needed to make, this was a relatively affordable project in the first place. Nitpix Wool of the Andes I believe sells for $3 American while still being 100% natural material. So it's 100% Peruvian Highland wool. It's one of my favorite uh, natural, uh, you know, not acrylics and polyesters, yarns that are still at a low enough price range that uh, more people can afford it. So now I'm going to flip the camera around and show you what the inside of my rather chaotic notebook looked like for the design process of this cardigan. Obviously this isn't an original design, but there is still quite a bit of effort that I had to put in in terms of uh, design and figuring out, you know, the schematics and all of the different um, cables and um, stitch patterns that I needed to go into this uh, project. So I'll be honest with you, the design process was quite chaotic. If I flip to the pages of my notebook where I worked all of these things out, I'm not sure they would be entirely legible but I did draw a schematic where I worked out all of the individual measurements that needed to go into this particular cardigan. So um, as far as the design goes, this is a relatively straightforward design. It is a drop shoulder. So what it means is it's essentially just a big rectangle that's uh, e even on the front and the back side. So all of the stitches are distributed evenly. Now, because your shoulders are not straight across like a box, you do need to do some shaping in order to get that to fit nicely across your shoulders so that it's not stretching in order to fit around you. Uh, it is a V-neck, so there's gonna need to be some shaping to get it to, um, to open up that way. And then there's a neckband, which overlaps by two inches. And then the sleeves are quite relaxed. 
So they're going to be a little bit large and longer than you would expect it to be. And this overall, what I went with was a, uh, so this is 28 inches on the front side and 28 inches on the back for a circumference of 56 inches. So that, my natural full bust measurements is a 48. So 56 would be an eight inch of positive ease uh, done straightforwardly, but actually my bust distribution is 25.5 on the front and on the back it is uh, 22.5. And what it means is on the front, there's going to be one and a half inches of positive ease and on the back there's going to be uh, 6.5 inches of positive ease. So overall it's going to fit quite loosely but it's going to be more loose on the back than the front. This isn't my favorite way of designing sweaters because when you have a large bust to waist ratio I typically like to do bust starts to make sure it really forms around my body but since this is an oversized sweater um, as long as it fits sort of in a relaxed manner I think you'll achieve the look that you're wanting to achieve. Ah, I forgot there's gonna be three buttons as well and then after that I had to figure out this there's one big cable that goes along the very edge of the cardigan and then there's one twisted stitch which is smaller and then there's lots of small cables that go along the cardigan itself and that is filled in between with some seed stitches. So once I figured out this part, I needed to figure out, so I have the overall measurements that I want, but then I had to figure out how the distance, how wide my arms were going to be, how much was going to be, uh, I wanted to decrease towards to make that arm shape, and also what is the stitch gauge that I want to knit this at, because that really affects um, how many the final stitch count. So I did quite a few uh, different samples uh, or gauge swatches in order to figure out uh, what is the gauge that I want to knit this at. Obviously when you already have a pattern it tells you what you need to knit the pattern at in order to get the dimensions that are intended, but when you're knitting it yourself you can sort of play around with the different stitch gauge to figure out what looks best. So I ended up going with a 24 stitch gauge, which means over four inches, it should be six stitches per inch. And so to figure out the rest, for example, because it's 26 across the front and there's two inches of a band here, there's 13 stitches on or 13 inches on each side. So to figure out how many um, stitches I need for the front side, for example, I would take the six stitch per inch, multiply that by uh, the 13 inches I need, and that equals, wait, three times six is 18, 78. And 78 was ended up being the stitch count that I went with because it was also divisible by 13, which is what I worked out in this chart for the actual pattern to be. Um, I'm not going to go through each of the measurements and how I calculated it, but essentially what you need to do is multiply everything by how many stitches per inch. So if you know your armhole is going to be uh, 20 inches all the way around, you need to multiply 20 inches by 6 in order to get how many stitches you need. So 
using that, I got all of the shaping that I need. This all took about three days and multiple uh, knitting and re-knitting to figure out, but I ended up with a pattern to follow. Now, I started filming this video actually kind of a bit of a ways into the project, so I've already knit the two fronts because they were exactly the same as each other, so after I was comfortable with one of the front sides, the other side was just a matter of doing the same thing but mirrored. So that is where I'm at. And just to talk you through the, some of the design details on this, so the bottom of this cardigan, originally I thought it was just a regular cast on, but upon looking more closely at the images, it's actually a tubular cast on, which is quite common for machine knit projects. And it gives it kind of this professional finish. And you do this by doing, I think it's called an Italian cast on. Anyway, you kind of twist like this while you're casting on instead of, you know, the usual motion of making a loop and tightening it. You do, do this twisting motion and what you end up with is a cast on edge that's already in knits and purls, which match up to the, the actual ribbing that you're going to proceed to do. But instead of knitting the knits and purls right away, what you do is a, a double knit the project to make this tubular cast on so for every so when you have these stitches on your needles you will knit the knit stitches as it appears but when you come across a purl what you do is you move the, the yarn to the front so that it doesn't get uh, tangled on the back side you slip the purl stitch so you don't knit it and you knit the next knit and then you move this the knee, the yarn around and you skip the next purl and that create so essentially what you're doing is knitting the all of the knits as one layer and then when you flip it around you knit all of the purls you skip as a different layer and that creates this sort of edge that looks like it continues uh it, it's a continuous and it doesn't have an edge to it like that so um after that, you do a bit of knitting, you add in the contrast colors. Uh, this, I tried a variety of different row lengths and this seems to be the most attractive looking. And then here are what the stitches look like. So these are 13 stitch repeats. So you have some seed stitches followed by some cables. Uh, and then these are the panels that essentially extend out the sizing. So the center has this big eight stitch cable and you can see it's maintained all the way up so you do the decreases in between here and then this is actually a, a twisted stitch. Oh, it's getting all blown out by the, the lighting here but um, this is a twisted stitch meaning it's basically a cable where you only twist two stitches around each other. So you move one stitch in front of the other to make this twist. Whereas this one is a four stitch cable. So you move two stitches in front of, uh, rearrange two stitches. And this one is an eight stitch cable. So you rearrange four stitches to make that twist. Now, personally, I don't like cabling with a need, an extra needle because I think it takes up more time. So what I do is I rearrange the stitches just by pushing it off the needle and picking all the stitches back up again. If you're not as confident of a cable knitter um, or you're worried that you're going to drop stitches and they're going to unravel, um, you can always get a second needle that you can put stitches on temporarily while you're rearranging the stitches to make these twists. Um, but like I said, I just, I've never not caught a stitch as long as you keep a firm hold on the stitches while you rearrange it. You shouldn't have a problem in terms of unraveling and even if you do it, you just, it's a matter of just like picking them back up again. So that's where I'm at with that. And then obviously you start the decreases up here to make this shaping. And then for the short rows, what you're doing is, uh, 
you can see a little bit that shape you're knitting more on the this end than you're on this than you are on this end and how you do that is you knit uh, until a certain number of stitches so here uh, there were 60 stitches across the top and I wanted to uh, knit an inch and a half more here than on this side so uh, based on my row gauge that meant I had 10 rows to do my short row shaping over. Anyway, somehow I figured out that meant I had to do short rows five times. 60 is easily divided by five. So 60 divided by five is 12 stitches. So I knit 12 stitches and then I did a short row and then knit back to the end. And then I knit to the 12 stitch resolve the short row by knitting it as if it's a normal stitch and then knitting another 12 stitches and then doing the German short row wrapping and knit all the way back again and you just keep doing this back and forth and eventually that builds up more rows here than it does on this side and that creates that triangular shape. So what I'm about to do now is start the back piece which is a um, the same stitch pattern essentially, but there's going to be a diamond in the middle, uh, and then the these these stitches will be mirrored on, depending on which side it's on, and then I'll also have the short row shaping across the top of the back as well. But other than that short row shaping, the back is essentially just a big rectangle. After the back is knit, what I'm going to do is seam the front and the back together by the sides and then pick up the stitches for the armholes and then once I pick up the stitches for armholes I'll knit down in pattern so the diamond appears on the top of the arm there and then you have the extra cables around and then you gently decrease it uh, it's gonna be very gentle because it's meant to be oversized and it's gonna be a sleeve that I can like push back up so it's gonna be a little bit long I think it's going to hit me at the widest part of my uh, hand there. So I made sure when I calculated my sleeve that it would end up at a size that would fit comfortably, comfortably around the widest part of my hand. So you know where my wrist is I think 7 inches in circumference, my actual hand is maybe 10 and a half. So I had to make sure like whatever decrease I did would not make it smaller than ten and a half so that I could have it sort of hanging and covering my hands in a very cozy sweater. And then the neckband is the last step. You pick up all of the stitches around the neckband and then knit and uh, make the buttonholes that there's going to be three buttons on top of this cardigan. So it's been a relatively quick project so far. These are just generic plastic buttons that you can get from any store and uh, they're one inch in size. Uh, I made buttonholes on the band so I, I bound off some stitches and then I cast them back on again and picked up an extra stitch to close the hole that it made. Um, so I cast off four stitches which is around half an inch so the buttons are one inch in size. It's about half. I don't know if that's the proper way you're supposed to do it, it seems logical to me. 
I'm really happy with the decision to use a tubular bind off and tubular cast on. For all of it, it made this really lovely, like, um, clean, sort of professional looking finish. It's going to look a little bit less wobbly once I actually give this cardigan a wash. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to wear this a lot because, yeah, it's basically like one of those old fashioned tennis or vintage style tennis cardigans. Um, I know people are going to ask, is this going to be available as a paid or free pattern? The answer is not sure. Um, like I just said, it's a classic tennis cardigan, but, and, uh, and there's like half of it, which I did design, which was a drop shoulder, short row shaping, relaxed fit uh, cardigan. However, like the distinctive combination of stitch patterns with that shape was definitely in, like taken directly from the, um, the photo. So anyway, if anyone has any thoughts about that, let me know. I don't have the answer at the moment. And I feel like it's one of those things where someone could tell me it's legal, but my follow-up question would be, but is that okay? Because, you know, it's not a very big step to say, oh, well, it's okay to make money off of this. What if we start to make that argument for like independent knitwear designer patterns? And I feel like it might be opening a box that I don't want to open. So, um, I mean, I feel like a good alternative is, you know, a, uh, very basic drop shoulder cardigan because that is the part that I sort of calculated all myself and figured out how I wanted to fit on me and not necessarily based on the sweater other than just like getting the inspiration of the oversized fit and if you were to choose to add these stitch patterns to it that would be kind of your prerogative maybe that's a good alternative but overall, I think it's really cute and super cozy, which is kind of what the whole folklore album seems to be encapsulating. So I'm happy with this project. There we go. Thanks for joining me for this video. I hope you liked it. Um, I know it wasn't necessarily a step-by-step -step tutorial, <laughs> but um, it's sort of hard to film knitting tutorials for a project because it takes so long to knit like when you're sewing you can just sit and you can film over the course of one or two or three days on a project where and you you do a lot of the steps very quickly but for knitting like there's like a lot of just doing rows over and over again so it's hard to be like decrease on the two ends of this uh, round, but it takes 20 minutes to get to the other end, you know, so it's not very riveting necessarily, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed either way, and um, I hope to see you around again. Make sure to click subscribe and like the video. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.